I'm Megan, and thanks for joining me for class today. This is going to be a slow flow, but on the soothing side. I'm getting ready to go cross-country skiing, and I find that it feels really good to do uh, to go into the more stretchy part of yoga, which I don't typically do. I believe in the importance of strength training in yoga for the most part, uh, but when I know that I'm going to be flying across a golf course on my skis. I like to know that my muscles are ready to move, so stretching. And um, you, you may want to have some blocks if you use blocks or a blanket handy. But again, this will be more calming and relaxing. And come on to your sit bones however you'd like to sit. And flip your palms up. Just leave your palms open to receiving. Feel your legs. Sense wherever your feet have landed, your lower legs, your upper legs, the three joints, your ankles, your knees, and your hips. And just feeling that space of you. And then come into your pelvis and notice your pelvis. You might even rock back and forth or make little circles so that you can locate what parts of your pelvis are touching the ground. And then feel your torso the weight of your whole upper body. Just begin to allow the weight of the upper body to find its presence in the pelvis. So letting the weight of the body release into the pelvis. And if it feels better, go specifically into the sits bones. Feel your spine relax into your sit bones. Notice even the shoulders sliding down your back. You might sense the stability of your sacrum on the back, holding that backside and transferring the weight into the base of your spine. So we feel stable. We're embodied. And part of that embodiment is noticing the breath. And if you're able to release the weight of the body into the pelvis, begin to take a nice soft breath into your belly. Feel your abdomen rise as you breathe in and draw in and contract slightly as you breathe out. We'll take about five more rounds of belly breath. And I don't typically start with belly breath unless I'm going to do a more relaxing practice. But this is a way to set that tone that we're going to work on holding space for ourselves, learning what holding space is in yoga for ourselves in this practice. So right now is holding space in the seated position. And my definition of holding space is having physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual awareness in whatever is coming in right now. So that'll change as we begin to do our practice. We might be more in that physical realm. Right now you can be fully in the breath realm. And then let the breath start to come up a little bit higher. If it's not already, let it fill your torso on the inhalation. Invite yourself to empty the torso on the exhalation. And I also define holding space for ourselves a little bit differently than some um, there's a word mindfulness, which is very overused and overreaching if you ask me. But mindfulness is just, we often say, staying in the present moment. Um, that is sometimes asking a lot of us. So when I want to hold space for myself, I go more into a contemplative mind, which contemplative to me means I can allow myself to go into past and future as well. So I'm not locked into, I have to stay in this present moment. What am I feeling right now? I might drift off and say, what's it going to feel like? What's my body? What's this part of my body going to feel like when I'm cross-country skiing, go into the future? Or how did my leg feel after yesterday's practice, remembering what that felt like? So it's still the, the thing that's in common with mindfulness and contemplative is that presence of awareness but we don't have to be in the now. Past, future, it all counts. And you can set your intention. 
So how can this practice help you in the future? Whatever it is you've got planned for yourself for today. And maybe it's also an opportunity to bring up some memories from the past, whether that be physical memories, experiences in your physical body, or mentally, emotionally. All those layers of your being. And then we're just going to start with a nice stretch. Press your fingers into the ground. Lift up a little bit taller so we've been settling into the pelvis, but now lift the crown of the head up just to create some space through the spine. Length. Length and feel the vertebrae as they lift up slightly away from the pelvis. Then inhale, reach both arms up. All the way up, feeling your side bodies. Pausing here so we're holding space in this simple stretch. Draw your thumbs back slightly. Maybe soften the tops of the shoulders away from the ears. Notice how you've changed the container for your breath just by lifting your arms. You might feel more ability to breathe in and around the rib cage. Take advantage of that. And then we'll keep the right arm where it is. Just place the left hand on the ground and on an exhalation side stretch over to the left. Using that left hand for support, reaching through the right hand. If you like complete stillness, that's there for you. I tend to like to pulse the arm just a little bit and also nod my head no or yes to get a little neck movement in. So you can do that as well. Holding space for whatever it is that arises. Maybe this reminds you of something from the past. Or you might think, oh, this will really help if I do blah, blah, blah later, like me. Breathing into that right side. Inhale, come back up. And exhale, take the right hand down. Side bang over to the right. You can be still or do gentle pulsations through that left side. Just let this be holding space for whatever arises in your body, your thoughts, the way you breathe. Last breath out. Breathe in, lift back up. And breathe out. Take your hands down to the heart center. We're going to begin with a um, long-legged stretch. I'm going to remove that from under my, my pelvis, but you might want to keep something under your pelvis because we're going to take the legs out long but wide. So if you find you're falling into your low back, take a bolster, a blanket, something, and sit on it until you feel like you're, so not all the way on it, because now I can still fall back, but scooting forward to the edge of that blanket, bolster, whatever it is, so that you feel like your pelvis is staying in that neutral position. You can still feel your sit bones. And then point your toes and your kneecaps up just enough. You might th slightly roll the thigh bones inward, just enough to feel slight action in the legs. And then we're going to make some circles with the torso. You can think of circling around on the sit bones. Just nice and easy, beginning to experience the backs of the legs, the low back. And then if you've been going one direction, you can switch that direction. And it can be a head movement, but I'm really trying to focus on moving the whole torso around in a circle. And then next time you come up, inhale, reach the arms up as we did in the beginning. Start with a little action in the legs, so press the backs of the knees into the ground, toes up. Draw your kneecaps up your thighs so you feel strong through your legs. And we'll exhale and pour ourselves forward from the navel center and the heart, reaching out long at any time. You can take your hands to the ground or to your legs and pause in that wide leg fold. Pause and hold space for the back of your body, wherever it feels good, not pushing yourself down. You might have more of a bend in the knees. It's all part of that holding space. Try to remember maybe there's something you've done in the past in this pose that made it feel better. Maybe you've done something that didn't feel good, so stay away from that. Last breath. 
and then we'll inhale. Press the legs into the ground, reach up through the hands again. And exhale, hands down to the heart center. I'm gonna to turn towards you so you can see a little bit better. And we're gonna take the legs straight off the hips so we're in that wide leg position. I'm gonna leave the left leg where it is and bring just the right leg in for Janusasana. So the foot can come into the inner thigh line wherever it's comfortable. Heel might come all the way to the perineum, it doesn't have to. If the right leg is up in the air, use a block or a bolster, blanket, something, and support it. See if you can rock back and forth and find the sit bones so we're not falling into the low back. Tilt the pelvis slightly forward, left toes up towards the sky, draw the kneecap up. Slightly press the pinky toe side of the right foot into the left leg. Let's inhale and reach for a moment, feel that length. And then we're gonna exhale and we're gonna to twist to the right. So take your left hand to your right knee and right hand behind you. Relax the shoulders. First rotation of the practice. So notice that in the spine, that twist. And just enough muscular engagement to allow yourself to feel the stretch of your torso. Maybe that inner right thigh, back of the left leg. Holding space for whatever comes up. Breathe out. As you breathe in, turn back to the center, reach up again. Breathe out, take the hands down, keeping this leg position. Explore through circles. So you might be able to get a little bit deeper into the back of the left leg line now that we're just in one leg extended. You might also feel more into that inner right thigh. Just an exploration. I'm exploring and coming forward and going into the past because I see all of the dog hair on my leg and think, oh yeah, I had a great time this morning with my dogs, playing with them. <laughs> and then you can switch and go the opposite direction. So those are the kinds of things that come into our head. We're not meant to block all that out in these practices. We're just meant to notice and be aware what it is that comes into your head. Is it healing? Is it soothing? Does it make you feel powerful? And then come back to the center, inhale your arms up, and exhale and come forward so you can stay more upright, at least coming into it, draw the thigh bone up into the hip, maybe press through the heel and the ball of the foot so the leg line is active, press right foot into left. Hands can come to the ground, to your shin, to your foot. See what it feels like to take your outer right hip and draw it back just a little bit towards the back of your mat and then plug that left leg into the left hip and then let it all go for a few breaths just hold space for whatever you came into here breathe out as you breathe in, left leg strong, right leg engaging to the left leg, and then inhale, lift up. Exhale, hand back down. Take that right leg out if you can. Try not to use your hands, use your muscles. Squeeze it in first, and then take it out. Let it go, shake it out. Come back onto the sit bones. You might still be using the bolster underneath you. Right leg will stay long. Bring your left foot into the inner thigh. So I usually use my hands a little bit just because I like my heel closer to my perineum. But this side, you'll see my knees up in the air. So I like to support it. Two sides are different. Press through the heel and the ball mount. Draw the thigh bone up into your hip. Inhale, reach your arms up. Lengthen through the sides of the body. And as you exhale, rotate to the left. A nice soothing rotation. Feel that twist through the spine. You can still balance yourself on your sit bones. Can you still let the weight of the torso fall into the pelvis? While feeling the stability of everything that's touching the ground, including that back left hand.
Where is your breath breathing you in this posture? Last breath out. Breathe in, come back to the center, reach up for a moment. Shoulders over the hips. Exhale the hands down. They can rest at your sides or in front of you and make those circles. Just exploring. Notice when you feel stretched through the back of the left leg, through the inner, or inner left thigh, back of the right leg. Anytime you want, you can switch the direction of your circles. Because I know I'm going to be doing something else that, that my body is gifting me, doing that skiing. That's the way I look at it. I say thank you to my body for letting my mind and heart be happy when I'll be on my skis. As I'm just saying thank you to my body. I'm preparing it. It's a gift before it takes me to these places. Come back to center. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, come forward. So we don't need to grit our teeth. We don't have to go that far. Just let gravity take you down. Hands to the ground, to your shin, to your foot. It's not the pursuit of unbridled flexibility. It's a way to show gratitude to your body. Prepare it so it can allow you to do the things that bring you joy. You might draw the left hip back slightly, plug the right thigh bone into the hip. Maybe breathe through your upper back. Notice the space in your upper back. Last breath out. Engage the legs. Use the left foot into the right foot, that resistance to create some engagement. Press the right leg into the ground, and as you breathe in, lift back up again. Exhale, hands down. Lift the left leg up. Take that out, too. Just shake out the legs for a moment. And we'll come off of our, out of our seated position. I'm going to move that over on to all fours and let's get it moving and let's just have some fun so widen your hands a little bit take your wrists slightly in front of your shoulders and turn your fingers outward so i've got a little bit of a slope from my shoulder to my wrist and then widen your knees just slightly wider than your hips if that feels good and we're just going to make some circles taking the hips back and coming forward just explore what it feels like to now move that pelvis that was so grounded we asked it to be still through all those stretching, all those stretches, and now you're just letting yourself roll around. Move your hips, your legs, feel the stretch through your arms. You can switch the direction of the circles. And notice what's staying stable and supportive, the hands and the shins, even the tops of the feet. And then we're going to pause in a wide leg child's pose. So you're going to want your knees wide where they are. Bring your big toes together. Start to walk your hips back as far as you can go comfortably. Before you go all the way back, come on to your fingertips. Crawl your arms forward so you'll feel a nice stretch underneath the armpits. And then let the hips come back as far as they can fall without forcing them. The arms are long. If for any reason this doesn't work for you, you can put a block underneath your forehead to support your head. <clears throat> or you can bend your elbows. But I'm going to go for a bigger stretch in the arms because we do use a lot of arms in cross-country skiing. So I'm going to take the palms together. If you want to join me, take your palms together. Press the palms together. Draw the elbows in towards your head. And then bend the elbows and touch the back of the neck with the thumbs. Hold space for yourself what comes up and that might be the physical space of feeling the stretch underneath the under under the arms and in the armpits your back maybe the knees do 
two to three more rounds of breath. Release the hands back down if they're up. Come up to all fours. We'll do some traditional cat-cow. So hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. So if you were broader, now you're, you're lined up. And you're gonna inhale into your cow pose and exhale into your cat. And for now, let's keep the toes, tops of the feet on the ground, tops of the toes and tops of the feet. Such a simple movement, but so important to find this flow of the spine. And ankles play big, big role in cross-country skiing, I find. That's one of the things that's always getting sore on me. So we're going to switch this around a little bit. You're going to roll your toes under, press the balls of feet into the ground, press your heels back. And now you're gonna inhale into your cow still, but as you exhale, roll into your cat, take your hips back, feel the feet stretch out a little bit. You might also feel more of a stretch through your arms. Inhale, draw forward, keep the feet that way. Exhale, lift the center of the spine, draw the tailbone down and back towards your heels, feel the feet stretch out. You might even notice the toe creases, the space underneath the toe creases. And one more. And we're gonna take this one back. We're gonna keep those toes rolled under. So if you're feeling like you can go a little bit deeper into the feet, then drop your head down. It might even be on a block as before. And if you want a little bit more deepness, then draw the arms in, either just placing the hands behind you. So the backs of the hands are touching the ground and the arms are resting. Or you can clasp the hands into a basket Lift your knuckles up towards the sky. Stretch the fronts of the shoulders. Just make sure your neck is happy. The forehead will be supported by either a block or the floor. Feeling into the feet. So this idea of holding space. You know, if we know we just can't be there and something needs to change, like tops the feet to the floor, then do that. If you've got your arms up overhead, Gently draw your elbows out towards the long edge of the mat to broaden the upper back while you're drawing your knuckles up towards the sky. Breathe across the chest into the collarbones. Breathe into your feet. Feel that stretch through the soles of the feet and the ankles, backs of the ankles. And then release your hands back down. We're gonna come back to all fours. We're gonna find our first down dog. So walk the hands slightly forward of the shoulders. As you draw in through the navel center, you can keep those toes rolled under, but lift the knees. See if you can work the heels down a little bit. Start with that knee bend. This is a great way to open up the back line of the legs after sitting in that child's pose. You can gently shake your head out. You need the muscular action, the stability to hold you here to keep the hips high, feet and hands on the ground, but also use this as a stretch. So some people like to bend one knee at a time, like your bike pedaling the legs, we'll say, or alternating knees bending, one, the other one pressing towards the back of the mat. The other thing is to keep the legs straight, not bend the knees and lift one hip and heel at a time. Just feeling that stretch. If you lift one butt cheek up towards the sky and one heel and then drop it back down. Last one. Drop down to all fours again onto your knees. If you're having any issue with, with your knees, you can always double up your mat or put a blanket underneath. We are gonna be coming into a knee pose. So we're gonna, um, Widen our knees again into the wide leg child's pose, big toes together. But you're going to work your way back this time. And when you go back, take your right hand underneath you, thread it through, palm facing up. And you can either rest your head on your left arm, especially if your head's not coming down. You could use the block underneath your head or a blanket. Or if you can get all the way down there, go ahead and get that outer shoulder to the ground. 
letting your right cheek rest. And then walk that left arm forward first. Try to reach the fingertips all the way to the front of the mat. Crawl it forward. Lengthen through the left side. And then if it's available, we'll bind that arm. So you're going to turn your thumb down. Your upper arm bone will roll inward. So you're going to turn the palm up eventually. And then reach around so the back of the hand is touching the right hip. So I'm just doing an arm threading in this wide leg child's pose. Holding space for that stretch. So the difference for me when I'm doing more of a stretchy practice is I really try to focus on whatever's touching the ground. And instead of pushing into it to create force and muscular action, I allow myself to fall into it. Just release with gravity into the ground. So feeling that nice stretch through the right shoulder Maybe left shoulder if the arm is bound and the hips. Last breath there. Take the left hand back down. On thread the right arm. We're going to come up to all fours just for a moment. Line up your shoulders under over your wrists and your knees or under your ankles or knees. I'm sorry, knees under your hips. And then inhale and reach the right arm up just for a few breaths. Take that rotation. We'll take a little bit of muscular energy to hold it there, but feel the rotation through your hips. Little counter pose here. If your wrists don't like it, you can always do any of these hand poses on your forearm instead. Last breath. Then we're going to drop that right hand down. I'm going to turn sideways. You don't have to, but just so you can see me. I'm going to turn sideways. I'm going to keep my right hand on the ground, and I'm going to come onto my right knee. We're going to do a kind of a side plank here. Extend the left leg out. Come onto the big toe side of the left foot. And then just let your hips drop back and come forward. So think of this right thigh really strong. Squeeze the inner thighs. Bring the right hip forward and left hip. And drop back a few times. Just getting that little bit of stretch through the pelvis. Let your head stay in line with the rest of your spine. And then keep it forward as far as you can go so you feel strong. Right hand's going to stay on the ground. You can also make a fist or come onto a block if you feel like that floor is a little too far away. Put your hand on a block. And then you're going to take the left arm, either straight up, thumb over the ear, or you can swoop it along the horizon and take it all the way overhead. Reach through the left toes. Nice big full body stretch for the left side. So we still need some support from the ground. That's what's holding us in this space. But then the other part of the holding space is what do you feel in this posture? There's the physical holding and the awareness of holding space for ourselves. Last breath. Take the left hand back to the hip. Lift all the way up. Pause for a moment. So I turn sideways just so you could see me. And you can take your hands to the ground. Bring that left foot forward. Now you're back on the right knee in a lunge. And you can make circles with the pelvis. So go back and forth a little bit. Wake yourself up. If you want the blocks, they're there for you. Now for your hands to get your spine a little bit longer. One more, and then we'll find that lunge. I'm going to stay low and work more. So if I'm working more towards stretching, instead of hugging the thighs towards one another, I'm really going to bring the pelvis forward a little bit more. But not to where you know the joints are uncomfortable. You just want to feel a nice stretch through the back of the left leg. That needs to be able to move and find its full range of mobility when we ski. But also that the I'm sorry, the back right leg. <laughs> Also the front leg. Pausing for a moment there. And that lunge, you might be using your blocks. If you feel really rounded through your spine, the blocks are a nice way to get more extension through your spine.
I'm going to turn towards you. You're going to stay right there. But we're going to come up. You're going to roll that back right toe under, lift up, and we're going to come into a warrior two foot stance. So my right foot is parallel to the short edge of the mat, left foot pointing towards the long edge of the mat, and then bending into that front knee, keep the back leg strong. We always want the strength to support us, but work on getting a little more stretch in that inner left thigh. Draw your outer left knee towards the pinky toe a little bit, and then add the arms. And you can be still in this posture. I tend to pulsate a little bit in the beginning because I'm trying to feel the lines of, of stretching. How far can I go? where I'm getting a nice deep stretch without straining, or that idea of stretching without creating instability in the joints. And that's where we land and hold for just a few breaths. Watch that the back leg's not collapsing. You might check to see if you can feel the pinky toe side of the right foot, maybe lifting that inner arch just a little bit. Last breath there. Drop the hands, lift the front knee. We're gonna go into triangle trikonasana. So <clears throat> front leg will be straight. It's a good opportunity to use a block. You can put it somewhere by that inner left ankle. Reach through the arms, inhale forward with the left hand, kick the right hip towards the back of the mat. So stay long through that left side body. And then hand can come onto the upper thigh or lower thigh. If you can find the block, it's a lot more grounding for the hand to put the hand on something. Push the hand into the block. Reach your right arm up. And just holding space for the stretch. Enough stability that you feel you can stay here. Joints are happy, muscles are getting long. Okay, breathe into that right side. This is such a great one for the right side. That whole side body. Keep drawing your lower left hip crease towards the back of the mat. You might even imagine drawing your left thigh towards the back of the mat just a little bit. Last breath there. And then we're going to drop the right hand down and the right knee. So we're going to come back down onto the ground. Did lots of poses on one side that we need to do on the other side. Step that left foot back next to the right. Plant your hands and come into your down dog. Roll the toes under, lift up. We'll pause in the down dog. Get that nice stretch through the back line of the legs. Maybe noticing any difference in the two sides. Hug your arm bones slightly towards your ears but let the ears just fall between the arm bones. You can work your way into your ankles. If your knees are more bent, keep the bend in the knees, but try to let the heels drop towards the ground and then work the backs of the knees towards the back of the mat just a little bit. Get more stretch through the backs of the legs, the calves. Last breath. And then we're going to drop down to all fours again. So we're going to do that same series we just did on the one side. You're going to widen your knees towards the edges of the mat. Bring the big toes together. We're working our way back into a wide leg child's pose, but this time it's the left arm that's going to thread through. Slowly as you take the hips back, so you can get the shoulder to the ground if the shoulder and the head doesn't come to the ground, so the left cheek. Use a block underneath or you can use your right arm as a pillow, bending into that right arm. So this is a nice soothing version of this pose. See if you can breathe right into the, the left shoulder blade area and underneath it. And then you can reach that right arm forward, coming onto the fingers, crawl it forward create space through that whole right side. And the hand can stay there, or you can internally rotate the arm, so palm will flip up, 
And you're going to wrap around and place the back of the right hand somewhere towards the left hip or pocket. Find that bind. Just holding space. Feel the way the thighs just want to fall into the calves. Having an invitation sent out for gravity to just hold you wherever the body lands in the stretch. And then unbind that right arm, walk it forward. Press into the right arm to take the left arm out. Come back to all fours, briefly walk the knees in underneath the hips, and then we're gonna go into that side plank. So you're gonna take the left hand to the ground, or if it worked better, to a block. I'm turning sideways just so you can see me, but you're gonna kick your left leg out, take your right leg out long, and you can take your right hand to your hip first, drop the hips back, and then draw forward strongly with the left thigh. So this is, this is getting that left thigh ready for the stretching. Come forward and drop back. And then eventually we want to keep that pelvis in more of that forward position. <clears throat> you can keep your right hand on your hip. It can float up, thumb over the ear, reaching up there. Or you can take that arm all the way overhead. And I just remembered we forgot our twist, so we'll go back. I forgot our twist, we'll go back and do that. So hand, sometimes my body reminds me. See if you can feel a difference coming into that right side from the ankle all the way to the fingers. Watch so we're not falling back with the pelvis. So draw forward so you're getting a nice stretch through the front of the left thigh into the hip flexors. And then take the right hand back to your waist. Lift up. We're gonna, we for, I forgot a pose, so we're gonna come back to all fours just briefly. Place that right hand on the ground and inhale the left arm up into the twist. Sometimes I remember that I forgot and sometimes it's just complete forgettery. <laughs> Reaching up. And then we'll drop that left hand down. So this time it's the right leg that's gonna come forward for the low lunge. Bring that forward. And make some circles first or go back and forth if you'd like. You can bring the blocks in. So we had a little warm up stretch for that back left thigh, the front of the thigh when we were in the side plank version, but now you can come a little deeper into that left, left hip flexor stretch. Use the blocks if you'd like, or hands can be to the ground. But try to draw the pelvis forward. And if you're going too far forward to where your right heel's lifting up, it's not so much that you're coming too far forward, it's that the right leg needs to be further forward. So step that a little bit further. Because we're down on the ground, it's okay if the knee comes in front of the right ankle. It's a good little ankle stretch. But we don't want the heel lifting up. And then pausing and holding space. Last breath there. You're gonna stay where you are. I'm gonna turn just for the camera's sake. I have to do more turns than you do. <laughs> Roll your back left toe under. Lift up, we're gonna come into our warrior two on this side. So keeping it simple, left foot parallel to the short edge of the mat, right toes pointing towards the front of the mat. If you know you're gonna use your block, keep it handy. Begin to bend into that front knee, keeping the back leg strong. Just find that point where there's a good relationship between you feel the strength first, you want that stability, but you also are getting a nice stretch 
and the inner thigh of the right leg, front of the back, left leg, and add your arms in any time you want, right hand reaching forward, left hand reaching back. See if you can find a peaceful place to hold space for yourself. And part of the way you'll know is how is your breath breathing you? you comfortable in your breath? Straighten the front leg, drop the arms for a triangle pose. So you're always welcome to keep a little bend in the front knee. Sometimes that makes it more accessible to come into the side bend. And then we can work on taking the thigh bone back. But reach forward with your right hand. Kick the left hip towards the back. So get the right side body long too. And then you can come to your upper thigh, your lower calf, or hand to the block. If you've got the block, instead of holding the block, push into the block because that's going to help you to bring that left shoulder up towards the sky as you push in your torso will rotate upward or your left side of your torso and then plug your left arm in and take it up and if you've got that generous bend in your right knee begin to slowly think of taking the right thigh bone towards the back left thigh bone just a little bit it'll deepen the stretch but in a way that you're still stabilizing the joints get your head in line a lot of times we get this head forward thing going on in this pose so take the base of the skull back a little bit you can look down at the floor straight ahead or up at the top left hand hold space whatever comes up maybe think of the last time you did triangle and you think it doesn't feel anything like that that's the case for me. I haven't done this pose in a while. <laughs> I can tell. So past comes in. And then future saying, I need to do this pose more often. <laughs> That's all part of being contemplative. Just noticing what your self-talk is. Last breath there. We're going to roll that left hand down to the ground. Drop your left knee to the ground. Take your right foot back next to your left and back again into your down dog. Roll the toes under, lift the hips up. We'll take about five to eight breaths. You can find your down dog. Be still. Feel yourself breathing upside down. You can start to make a little more happen in your legs just by Imagine pushing the outer ankle bones towards the long edges of your mat or spreading your outer hips apart. And then lift your inner thighs. Last breath out. And then we're going to come back down to all fours. So I'm going to face this direction this time, but you're going to take your, you're going to walk your hands in, take your hands up over your hips, take your left leg out to the side. So we did this before. This time we'll do gate pose though. And I, I'm going to encourage you to take your hands to your hips, drop the hips back, and then draw forward. So again, we did this once before. Drop back and draw forward. Notice what happens with the muscles in and around your thighs, your pelvis. And then draw forward and keep that little bit of hips forward or at least hips over your knees. Drop your left hand, lift your right arm up, and as you exhale, take a side bend over to the left with the right hand. If you need to have a little bend in the left knee, that's allowed. And you can either be on the big toe side of the left foot. I find that's more comfortable if you want to roll that thigh in more, inward and downward, or you can be flat foot, get that extra ankle stretch. Find the space to hold for yourself. A 
last breath out. As you breathe in, come back up. We're going to keep this leg position. We're going to take it a little bit deeper and more into the back line. So you're going to exhale, take your hands down to the ground in front of you. So just like coming into a, a table pose, but you've got that left leg out there doing something funky. So you can be on your blocks if that's more helpful or to the ground. We're going to work our way down. So down might mean staying on the hands. It could be coming to the forearms. If that still feels like a decent stretch for you, not too much, because you're getting a nice stretch in that inner left thigh, then you can even walk your hands forward like in a down dog. Keep your arms strong, though. Spread your fingers. <clears throat> Dial your hands outward a little bit, and you might even take your head down towards the ground. Big stretch for the arms as well. Two more rounds of breath. Feel how long you can make yourself through your spine from the fingertips to the tailbone. Walk yourself back in, hands in. So you're on, your wrists are underneath your shoulders. And then you're gonna draw that left leg in. And we're gonna cross the left leg all the way behind the right leg. If the left knee doesn't touch the ground, that's okay. And then keep your hands whatever distance apart feels good for you. So the front, of my, the front of my left thigh is on the back of my right thigh. And then I'm going to slowly take my hips back. As I do that, my right knee needs to lift up. That's okay. I'm going to push back. Nice stretch for the low back and the outer hips. I'm going to rock forward. And I'm going to rock back again. Go at your own pace, just exploring. Forward. And back. You might feel a stretch through your ankles too. You're always welcome to keep moving if you're enjoying it. Otherwise, I like to land and hold that space. So as you draw back, let the right knee lift up. If your head wants more support, you could pull a block in. So this is kind of like a I call it my, my baby version of cow face pose to open the hips. I'm not a big cow face person. My hips don't like that position. The full version, if you do the full version, you know what I'm talking about it, ha talking about have at it. This is where I'm going to be, just letting the weight of my torso fall into my thighs. If you can get your head all the way down, you can do that too, or use your arms to support you. Just notice if you're trying to protect yourself from falling into the ground. And can you just fall into the ground instead? Nice stretch through those outer hips. Last breath out. Take the hands back out in front of you. Walk yourself forward. We're going to uncross the legs, reach that left leg back, come onto your right knee. So the left leg was in the back. And then you're going to inhale, lift that left leg up as high as you can. You can do it with a bent knee if you'd like. So stretch the top of the thigh, feel the back of the thigh engage, both hands on the ground. Exhale, draw the left knee into your body. So you can do that cat-cow spine as you inhale, left leg up. Exhale, draw in. Little bit of core action on the exhalation. Rounding, press into your hands. So lift the shoulder blades up too on the exhale. Drop the belly, lift the head on the inhale. Last one. This time squeeze that left leg, leg in, hold it there just for a breath or two, even though we're not strengthening. And then you're going to bring the left foot forward again for a warrior two. Roll the back right toe under, lift yourself up. Back in that warrior two, familiar. Left foot forward, right foot back. See if it suits you a little better this time. Add your arms in. And we'll come into our side angle pose this time. So the warrior legs are there. 
place your left hand somewhere on your left thigh and as much as we can get towards the knee, then we'll keep that side body long. Draw the left hip crease back. So we've got that space there and then right hand to your waist. Roll up, maybe roll the head of the right arm bone towards the sky. Hand can come up like it does in a triangle. Thumb over your ear, straight up, lifting that side or you can sway it along the horizon as we did, reaching up overhead here. And I'm always very cautious, especially if I want to be stretchy. I don't want to fall into that bottom arm. I want to push that bottom arm into the leg and then lift the leg into the arm. Rotate up towards the sky just a little bit with the right side ribs. Feel your whole right side. Strong and long. Last breath. Come back up into your warrior. This time we'll turn all 10 toes forward. We're gonna do a wide leg fold. So you're gonna reach up, lift up, and as you breathe out, drop your shoulders. You're welcome to bend your knees. Use blocks for your hands if you'd like. Wide leg seated, or wide leg standing fold. We did it seated. Now you have gravity to help bring that torso down. Or as I said, your hands might be on blocks. <clears throat> In your wide leg fold. Start with the knees bent. Lift the sits bones up and then take the backs, the calves, and the thighs away from your toes. When you're ready, inhale, come halfway up, use your blocks. You can take hands to the shins or to the ground. Get, so you can get the shoulders to the height of the hips. Lengthen out through the spine. Draw in through the belly just for a moment. Feel that inner thigh stretch. And then let's see your turn sideways. So you're going to exhale, come back down. Walk your hands towards that front left foot. Drop your right knee down. Come to all fours. Pause in all fours for a moment. Take your hands forward. Roll your toes under, lift up into your down dog. Find the symmetry of the down dog. Settling in there. And this is an opportunity to stretch the back of the legs, the calf, the ankle, the thighs but also the spine. If you find you're too rounded through your spine because you're trying to straighten your legs, bend your knees and draw your shoulder blades up your back a little bit towards your hips. Draw your hips up towards the sky, then take the ankles back down. Last breath. Coming down, all fours. We'll be on the knees again. We're gonna finish off this side, getting towards the end here of our stretchy, stretchy holding space. You're gonna stand your left leg, take your right leg out to the side. Hands your hips, drop the hips back. I usually do that on an exhale. Inhale, come forward with the pelvis. Exhale, drop back. I, I just got my motivation because as I face this way, I can look out the window and see the piles of snow just waiting for me. Exhale back, fresh snow. <laughs> Inhale forward. Exhale, drop back. And then come forward. Keep that little bit of forward motion with the thighs. Strong, drop your right hand. Lift your left arm up. Feel as your left arm lifts, your side body lifts. And exhale, side bend over to the right. So this gives us an opportunity to stretch out that side. We'll do it again when we come into the side angle. So breathe into the left side. So there's always this, there's the good side, I think, of going into the, into the past in yoga is what do you remember? So you know, we're in this pose now, and when we come into a side angle, is there some familiarity to you? It's okay to do that. And what did you like about it, and what do you need to change? Last breath out. Breathe in, come back up. 
So now we're going to take the hands down to the ground, or always the option to use blocks underneath the hands. Position one might be just here because you're already getting that nice inner thigh stretch. And if your hips are falling back, I noticed mine just were, try to bring your hips forward so you're, they're over your knees or in line with that right knee. If it's there for you, hands come to the ground. If that's easy, forearms to the ground. Still looking good and want some more? Walk the hands forward just like you're in a down dog with the upper body from the fingertips to the tailbone. And then as you exhale, melt your heart down and your forehead to the ground. Hug the inner thighs. Feel spacious through your shoulders. Take one more round of breath. Walk your hands back in. And once your hands are walked in, bring your leg in. Right leg, this time the right leg is gonna cross behind the left leg. And you can see if it feels better to have the legs really close together or knees wider apart. So the back of the, the left thigh is resting on the front of the right thigh. And as you take it back, the left knee will lift off the ground. It has to, that's okay. Work back into the hips and the sides of the pelvis. Come forward, your low back, and rock back. Just this little bit of movement. So as we draw back, we'll feel more stretching. And you can find how far you want to draw back. And eventually landing if you'd like. Find that position to rest in. The block is nice to put underneath your head. It, it comes prepared to give you three heights, high, medium, and low, right? <laughs> you can rest your head. See if you can soften your belly towards your thighs. Just feel that broadening through your pelvis. I know I'm feeling my I'm feeling myself fight myself, not wanting to just let go, and that'll show in things like the the toes are curled, or we're squeezing in. Just let the outer hips fall towards the long edges of the mat. Relax the shoulders down the back. Last few rounds of breath. <laughs> Hopefully you missed my spin move there. It was glorious. And then come back up to all fours. You're going to step that right foot back. Come onto your left knee in both hands. Arrange your wrists right underneath your shoulders. Draw up through your shoulder blades. Lift the right leg up, reach the toes. So you're gonna feel that nice engagement through the back of the thigh, but feel the stretch through the front of the thigh. It's all about what we focus on. Exhale, squeeze in. Feel the nice stretch in the back of the thigh and the buttocks. Inhale, lift up. Add the cat cow back and spine. Stabilizing through both arms and moving from the hip crease. We try not to let the hips go back and forth too much. Pelvis stays still, other than the tilting. One more forward, wherever you are. And that last one forward, really squeeze the leg in just for a moment. We're gonna step it forward. You can always bring your right hand in to help it come forward. Roll the back toe under, coming up into a warrior two footprint with the right foot forward, left foot back. Widen to whatever degree you need to. Bend into the front knee. So we bend here, so this is where the body goes. I remember, go into the past, remember this footprint. And then we add the arms, but we'll come into the side angle. So right hand to the thigh or forward towards the knee. Left hand can uh, come straight up, thumb over the ear or you can come all the way over, uh, upper arm over your ear. 
And now see if there's some familiarity through that left side body when we're doing the gate pose. So remember what you can and then make it new. Lift the right thigh into the left arm just a little bit. Rotate that left armpit like you want to air it out. Rotate it up towards the sky. Or think of your left shoulder blading rolling towards the back of the mat behind you. Line your head, your neck with the rest of your spine. None of that head forward. Last round of breath. Come back to your warrior. Once again, we'll do a wide leg fold. So toes forward. Inhale, reach your arms up. <clears throat> Exhale. Down and in. To the wide leg fold. And this time we're going to do a little bit of visiting. So take the fold and begin to walk your hands towards your left leg. Whatever that means, as close as you can go comfortably. So if you can get the hands to the ankle, you can do that and then bend your elbows to the side, gently drawing your torso in towards the left leg. So you're gonna get a deeper stretch through that left leg line this way. If that doesn't work, just keep your hands on the ground or even use a block. One thing I'll see happen is we'll shift all our weight into that left leg. So keep that right foot grounded, especially the pinky toe side as you draw in through the left leg. If you've got a little bit more flexibility, you can take your right hand to the pinky toe side of the left foot, left hand to the big toe side, and I'm tucking my fingers underneath the sole of the foot, and then I bend my elbows towards the ground to draw me in a little bit deeper to that left leg. Hug, you see you need more stability here. Hug your inner thighs towards the center of your mat and upward. Hamstrings will be ready. <laughs> Release any clasp you have. Come back to the center. Inhale halfway up just for a moment. Get long through the spine. Exhale, bow back down. Walk your hands towards your right foot. So to whatever degree, you still want to be able to hug the thighs. You can pause with the hands to the inside of the right foot. Might take right hand to the pinky toe side, left hand to big toe side. Grab a hold of the ankle if that's available. Grab that ankle, and then as you exhale, draw your navel center in and elbows out to the side. So create a little bit of stability, drawing the abdominal muscles up and in, the inner thighs together. And then you're bringing your torso towards that right leg. If that all feels good and you want to go deeper, take the left hand to the pinky toe side of the right foot, tuck the fingers underneath the sole of the foot, top of the hand facing up, and the right hand to the big toe side. So you're clasping underneath the foot, press the right foot into the hand, take a breath in and lengthen through your spine, take a breath out, bend the elbows towards the ground, draw yourself into that right leg. But you might have to slightly draw the inner right thigh towards the left thigh. Stretchy space right here in that right leg. Last breath out. All right, we're going to walk our hands back. Walk towards your right foot. Drop to the left knee. <clears throat> Last time in a down dog, so plant your hands, roll your toes under, lift up into your down dog. The one thing I do like to do after all that stretching is just get a little bit of core going here. So stretch it out in your down dog for a moment. We're going to do two, two poses for core. So the first one, I'm going to ask you to come on to your elbows. I know I said no strengthening, but it's good to hug it back in after that. Come on to your elbows. Clasp your fingers into a basket, and then keep your elbows. If you take them right here, you want to keep your elbows right about equal with your shoulders, so we don't want them to fly out to the sides. This is a forearm plank. Push your forearms into the ground so you feel your shoulder blades lift up out of the back. Draw your navel center in, in and up, and then walk your knees back and you might start to as you walk your knees back you'll start to feel your core and you can stay right there you're also going to feel your upper back because we use a lot of upper back muscles and and um, I'll, I'll be using them in when I go cross-country skiing so we want that action or I want that action if you want more core roll your toes under lift your knees up press through your heels feel your 
thigh muscles wrap around the femur bones. See if you can take five breaths here. <laughs> Last breath. Drop to the knees. We're going to come all the way down onto the belly into a sphinx pose. So we're still getting that ben benefit of the back bend. Pressing into your forearms, you can unclasp the fingers. Just lift the heart up, reach the toes back a little bit. Opening the front body. Feel the stretch through your belly. Just the, a good compression for the back body. Two to three more rounds of breath. We'll drop down and find all fours. Last core pose. I said there were two, so this is two of two. Plant your hands, come into your most stable table pose you could. So imagine drawing up a little bit through your abdominal wall and maybe tailbone goes down. So what we don't want to do is hang in the low back. So lifting up, press your hands into the ground. Hug your inner elbow creases towards one another and maybe turn your elbow creases slightly forward so your arms are strong. Then roll your toes under. And first just lift one knee up off the ground, see what that feels like. Can you feel a little action through the back of the thighs and your core? And then try lifting the other knee off the ground. What happens with that one? And notice I'm lifting my knee, I'm not tipping all the way over. And then once we're ready, we're gonna lift both knees, but just a couple inches, not, you know, the closer you are to the ground, the more work it's gonna be really. Draw in through the navel center. Press your hands into the ground. Find that core stability, arms and legs. Take three more breaths. Crown of the head forward, neck is long. Stretching out those ankles too, press through your heels. Exhale, let the knees come down, tops the feet down, and we're gonna come down onto our backs to finish up. A little more stretching on our backs. So working your way down onto the ground, let your back and spine relax. Feet to the floor, leave the left foot where it is. Bring the right ankle and cross it on the left thigh. Do a reclining pigeon here. So I like to do this in a little bit of movement first. So keeping the ankle on the thigh, you might take your arms out to a T and then let your legs fall to the left as you exhale, both legs. Feel that nice stretch, your outer right hip. Inhale back to the center. Then feel the big toe side of the left foot and let the legs fall to the right. Inhale to center. Just letting the legs go side to side. And not pushing them, but letting them fall. There's a lot of letting in this practice, huh? Holding space is about letting it be. Whatever is, is there. You have to accompany yourself and your thoughts with loving kindness. And then we'll come back to the center. Pausing there for a moment, you're welcome to keep your left leg on the ground or lift the left leg up. Hands can come to the back of the left thigh, to the shin. I know many of my students like to extend the left leg up towards the sky, you can do that too. Whatever works for you. Take some breaths. That's a word I've been searching my brain for a lot, is accompany. How do we accompany ourselves through this difficult time with the pandemic, everything going on? If you're in the U.S., there's lots of political things that we're working through, and just being able to be present for yourself in a way that whatever comes up, is accepted. You're holding space for everything that comes up. A thought is just a thought. 
And you're the only one that hears your thoughts. So can you accompany yourself in your thoughts? And this practice is good training ground for that. What are you thinking about your right hip or your left leg? Do we scold ourselves for not being flexible enough or something like that? It just, it doesn't do us any good, right? Take the right, the left leg back to the ground if it's still there. And then we did this reclining, but now you're going to cross the back of the right thigh and the front of the left thigh. It'll feel much better now that you're not on your front side. You can draw your knees in and just rock a little bit on your low back if you'd like. If you want to take it a little bit deeper, you can take your left hand to your right foot, right hand to your left foot. Let's see where it works for you. Letting your tailbone lift up, stretching through the back. And we'll uncross the legs. Let's take a full body stretch in between. Take both legs long, reach your arms up overhead. You can even clasp your hands into a basket press. Make your body long. You can arch your back and take a breath out. Let go. Side two, feet to the ground. Cross the left ankle on the right thigh. Sometimes you just got to hold on there for a moment, see what's going on. You can press the left thigh slightly forward. And then we'll do that movement, arms out to a T. As you breathe out, feel the pinky toe side of the right foot and just let the legs fall to the right. Breathe in, come back to center. Breathe out, fall to the left. Maybe your head wants to go along for a little ride. And we'll come back to the center position and pause. Right foot can stay on the ground. You might even just take your hand to your left thigh and work that left thigh bone towards the front of your mat. Or you can lift the right foot off the ground, hands to the back of the right thigh, to the shin, right heel up towards the sky, long right leg. It's up to you. So if we take that word, accompany, how can you accompany yourself in this pose? I think company has this sense of endearment and love, right? How can be present with love for yourself? Doing it for others is a whole other story. For some, it's easier to, to hold space and accompany others than it is for yourself. It's good to know if you're better at one or the other holding space for yourself and your thoughts, or holding space for someone else. And if the right foot's up, take it back to the ground, take the back of the left thigh, cross it as tight as you can across the right thigh, and then draw the knees into your chest. can be still. If you want to take it a little deeper into the stretch, grab your opposite foot with hand. And release the legs back down. We'll leave both feet on the floor, just ending in some really gentle windshield wipers. I'm going to add the arms to this if you'd like to join me. As you breathe out, let the legs fall to the right. And as the legs fall to the right, let the arms flop to the left. So you feel a little rotation through the spine. As you breathe in, arms reach up, kneecaps reach up towards the sky. Exhale, knees to one side, arms to the other. You may tend to find that your head wants to Follow your path of your arms. 
gentle rotation of the torso, but just falling. Let the ground hold you. That's the holding of space. Next time the knees are to the right, we'll pause. Let them fall all the way. If you want that deeper stretch on the hold, you can cross the right ankle on the left thigh. For me, that's more accessible. I'll show it on this side. If I put a block underneath my thigh so you can support that right thigh. <clears throat> the other thing is reaching that left arm slightly up overhead to feel more spacious through your left side body. Holding space, last posture, just being still and holding space. You can slide your arm back down if your right leg is on your left, uncross, lift the knees back up for a moment. Exhale, let the legs fall to the left, arms to the right. Left arm can go wherever you want it. If you want, and cross the left ankle on right thigh. If that knee's up in the air, support it. Put something underneath the left knee. Maybe right arm wants to reach up overhead. Last two breaths, feel the length through the left side or right side, maybe left side too, but typically right side. Slide your right arm down, uncross the legs. Come back up and if there's anything final that would feel good and fluidly, fluidly stretchy for you, take that. Otherwise, we'll just take a moment to ground into our body and relaxation finding that position that works best for you for relaxation. Where can you let go? We've been asked for the last nine months or so now to, to really be more intimate with ourselves and we've <clears throat> seen maybe parts of the world and even parts of people that we know well that we have not seen before. We don't see their faces, but we see a lot more emotionally going on. And learning to hold space through this time has been a really uh, important lesson for me. I thought I was good at it. <laughs> but there's always more work to be done. So staying present with loving kindness for yourself right now in this Shavasana. Be contemplative. So it has that component of mindfulness, being aware. But contemplative is about accepting whatever it is that comes in. It doesn't have to be in the present moment. You can observe and watch your own thoughts if they do stray to what happened yesterday or something you're thinking about tomorrow. What we watch for in that contemplation is that anything in the past, we're not bringing it back up in a way that we're berating ourselves or feeling guilt. It is what it is. We can't change it. And if we're going into the future, then just make sure that you're trying to focus on thoughts that are positive, that are creating, manifesting what you want. Our thoughts are energy that we put in our bodies. And then the simplicity of just being in the now. What does it feel like to rest your bones on the ground and let your muscles relax onto those bones? Accompanying yourself 
in this final relaxation without any goals. There's no right or wrong. It is what it is, whatever comes up. Sending the invitation for your breath to just breathe you again. Whatever that feels like. You're welcome to stay here as long as you'd like and rest. Come up to a seated position. Always encouraging you at the end of these videos, if you don't have a meditation practice, this is the best time to try it. After your practice, just take an extra five or ten minutes and sit. Turn me off. Enjoy holding space for yourself. If you'd like to come up, you can. I have a date with my dog and my cross-country skis. But I wish you peace, joy, love, and light. Keep holding space for yourself. And then we'll talk about holding space for others soon. Namaste.